Give it up again for Denver! I gotta say, he was one of the nicest, nicest, and whitest rappers I've ever seen. But I've never done rap uh, in Jacksonville, or let alone a uh, rap concert, so I thought I'd get into character for this. So, before the show, I had unprotected sex with a white girl, and I think it's working perfectly. Uh, Anyway, I'm from Tallahassee. This is my first time performing in Jacksonville. So, it's, it's very nice to be here. And, uh, I think Jacksonville is a great home for comedy. And if you don't believe me, you should really watch a Jacksonville Jaguars football game. It's really amazing how little effort it takes for them to make me laugh so hard. But I've also noticed something about the Jaguars, and especially their die-hard fans. These are the fans that every year, it's their year. They're gonna go to the bowl every single year. And I guess this time, uh, they got a new guy, Khan, or whatever his name, Mustache Man, I don't know. But, uh, you can always spot these die-hard Jags fans. And I've noticed this, especially in parking lots. Publix, Walmart, Target, you can always spot their cars, not because of any decals or flags or whatnot, but you can always tell it by where they are parked. Every single die-hard Jags fan likes to park in handicap spots. I don't get it, but it explains a lot. Um, Recently, I went on a vacation to Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, where everything gets done. Not. But I noticed something. I went to all these museums, and through all the learning of the history of how uh, our nation was founded through white Anglo-Saxon Protestant men pillaging, raping, enslaving, tyranny, bloodshed, all this, some things didn't really sit well with me. There were two things. One. Why was there a penny souvenir press machine at the Lincoln Memorial? <laughs> Wasn't the souvenir on your floor, your grandma's purse, all along? You didn't really have to go to D.C. for that souvenir. Um, next. I bought tickets for my girlfriend and I to go to the Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens, at Ford's Theater, the infamous Ford's Theater where Lincoln was assassinated. And upon arriving there, next to the entrance door, I saw a sign that read in big bold letters, Firearms Strictly Prohibited. Where the fuck was that sign when we needed it? But the holiday season is here, and mostly gone. I'm sure a bunch of people who aren't Christian are very excited for this. Uh, I hope you guys had a great holiday season. I, for Christmas, got from my girlfriend, who claims to love me, a pull-up bar and a water bottle. <laughs> Apparently, I'm very out of shape, so... That's that. But uh, we have a big family, my brother and I and my mom who are here tonight. Uh, so we decided we're having a big family dinner. And after the drinks, the food, the love, the festivities, we decided to play catchphrase. And if you've never played this game, it's great to do if you really want to know who a person is. Who a person really is at their core. So my partner was my brother, Sean Fisher. You might know him from Flagship Romance. Sh shout out. Uh, so, my word was Smithsonian. I had just been to DC. I had this one in the bag. So I start out, okay, 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 uh, uh, think DC, Washington DC, all right, uh, yes, yes, um, uh, they're everywhere in DC. They're extremely cheap to get into. Uh, they own all the museums. The Jews! <laughs> Bless you? Do you... No, the Jews. Oh. Well, I mean, that explains a lot. 21 years, I didn't know this about my brother, but it really explains why when we were in DC, his number one attraction that he wanted to go to, the Holocaust Museum. What an asshole. But that explains, there are 
things that you should keep private and there are things that should be public and there's a fine line and that line these days is really starting to blur. And I really think the blurred line is from Facebook, social media network sites like Twitter, Instagram, the NSA, all those. Uh, but there are some things that should be private and should not be public. For me, backstory, uh, when I was in high school, I had a bunch of surgeries, like on my arms and everything. So I have, from like right here to right here, scars. So every time I go with my friends to the beach, take off my shirt, they're like, oh my god. What the fuck happened to you? And first off, rude. Second off, I don't really want to tell them the story because it's not that entertaining. It's not funny, it's not scary, it's just surgery. But, since I'm what people might call psychotic, I decided to spruce up the story a little bit. Pepper in some entertainment, if you will. So, when they come up to me and ask me, oh my god, what's the story? What happened to your arms? I usually take a step back, try to dry my throat out. If I can cry at the time, it's fine. And I say, yeah, my dad's a fucking asshole when he drinks. And that usually works. So I can go play in the seat by myself. But the guys in the audience, there's a bunch of guys out there, and they might understand this point a little more than the girls, seeing as they're smarter. Um, but guys, if you've ever had like coitus with a woman, and if you're still in high school, you don't understand what that word means, it's sex. Uh, and if this girl is someone you care about, they usually want to spend the night with you in bed, overnight. It's crazy. It's comfort. Men are strong. But do not, under any circumstance, let these women fall asleep before you. Because if they do, you cannot move until you fall asleep. You, you do. And just hopefully, you will fall asleep. Because if you move, God help you. I swear, any like little thing like that to mess up with her fantasy of Ryan Gosling pouring peanut butter and Chex Mix on her, that's just me, but anything to mess up the fantasy, like I said, just any little thing like this. It's like I was Michael J. Fox in a china shop, just fucking shit up for her. So, again, I ask, why is this my fault? How is it my fault that you chose to fall asleep before I could masturbate? <laughs> Speaking of awkward stories. But, girls are really crazy, and I know this from past experiences. My, my ex, I'm not going to tell you her name because that would be very mean of me, and I'm not mean. Her name's Crystal Bruckner down in Melbourne, Florida. You can, she's on Facebook. You can find her if you want. But we decided to adopt a dog together, and don't do that. Don't get a living, living breathing creature with a uh, girlfriend, spouse, anything. Because you only have two options to regain your sanity. Kill the dog, or get a lobotomy. And we had this dog, wasn't potty trained at all, she didn't know, she took a shit in the house. And I was trying to be the responsible uh, owner and clean up, and she decided to yell at me the entire, entire time. So I decided, fuck this, I'm going downstairs to clean dishes. Very therapeutic for me. I didn't know that behind me was my ex getting ready to fling a bag of dog shit at my head. And that really, really underscores how crazy girls are and how quickly it takes for a functioning human being to go from eh, sane to poop flinging primate. So the girl I have now is smart, beautiful, funny, uh, still crazy. But she really hates it when I have girls who are texting me. I have a bunch of female friends. It's not my fault that girls are really attracted to this. 
So I had a brilliant idea, or what I thought was a brilliant idea at the time, to change all the email contacts in my phone to members of my family. All the names, I have an extended family, as you know, so I changed them to mother, brother, sister, all those things, and it was going great. But every great thing in my life, of course, has to stop. And she was really happy, like we were, she thought I was getting really close with my family, but shit really started going downhill when she caught me in the bathroom sending pictures of my penis to my six-year-old niece. Apparently there's a fine line between close with your family and too close with your family. And that line is about three and a half inches. <laughs> but that's all the time I got for you. Thank you.